So this screencast is going to be all about the many ways we use ratios in chemistry. They are one of our most important key skills. So if your maths is a little shaky or you want to pick up some extra tips, stick around and I'll go over three different methods and then six examples for you to try and for us to then work through. So the first thing to realize is that chemistry is cooking. And a key skill of any chef or, or chemist is the ability to scale a recipe up or down depending on how many guests are expected. So really that's the whole point of this screencast. Ratios are about scaling. If we're cooking eggplant parmigiana for two, we'll need two eggplants, two tomatoes, an onion and parsley. If we expect six guests, then we scale everything up by a factor of three. We say there is a fixed proportion of ingredients to make the dish. In chemistry, we use ratios a lot in solving problems where atoms or reagents or properties are proportional or are found in fixed proportions. So what does proportional mean? It means if one thing goes up or down, the other things do the same. So this is just the same as in cooking. If you want more servings, you need more of each ingredient. If you want less, then less ingredients are needed. So where are these kinds of problems found? Well, we're going to briefly look at six different examples that could be thought of as stoichiometry problems or concentration problems or pressure conversion problems. We won't solve them just yet, but just sit back and notice how they all involve scaling, either up or down. So firstly, in stoichiometry, a chemical equation will tell us that it takes two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of water gas. The mole ratios tell us what's required if we have 10 moles of hydrogen gas to react. Also, if three moles of A reacts in some way to produce five moles of B, then less A will produce less B. The third example looks at the formula for a compound such as propanol, which tells us it contains a fixed proportion of carbon and hydrogen atoms. You can count them in the formula, three to six. So the mass of carbon is also proportional to the mass of hydrogen. Our fourth example looks at concentrations. If there are five grams of solute dissolved in 30 mils of solvent, then the amount dissolved in 75 mils will be proportionally larger. Also, if an absorbance reading of 1.6 indicates a solute concentration of 15.1 micrograms per mil, then an absorbance of 0.96 will be proportionally less. And finally, given that 760 millimetres of mercury is equivalent to 101.3 kilopascals, a pressure of 70 kilopascals will be proportionally less. So how do we solve these types of problems? Well, I'm going to go over three different approaches and you might even know these already. It's also possible there's something here you've not seen before, so hopefully that might be of some use. The approaches I'll cover are the unitary method, the scale factor method, and the cross-multiplication method. Three different approaches which all give the same results. So firstly, the unitary method, so unit meaning one. So in this method, we divide both sides of the problem to get one side down to one, and then we multiply both sides to reach a target value. So if we take one of our previous examples and look at A first, to get from three moles to two moles, we divide by three to get down to one, and then multiply by two to arrive at two. So we follow the same approach for B, five moles divided by three and multiplied by two gives us 3.3 moles. Now, in the scale factor method, we have to come up with a factor or multiplier that allows us to convert our initial A value 
to our final A value, and then we use this also on the B value. So here's the same example. By inspection and thinking about how multiplied fractions cancel down, we choose two thirds as our multiplier. Why? Because our starting value of three over one has three as a numerator, which will cancel the denominator of three in our multiplier. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe write it out and you'll see how they cross out. Which leaves us, when we multiply, with 2 over 1, or 2, as our final answer. So 2 thirds is the multiplier we need. And we use this same multiplier on our B value, and again, get 3.3 moles. The third method I'm going to cover today is called cross-multiplication. And here, we arrange each pair of values under each other and then cross-multiply. This one's my favourite method and I tend to use it whenever I tackle a ratio problem because it works really well and really well under pressure. So we'll take the same example again and a key point to the method is using headings to ensure that all the information is in the right place. So here our headings are substance A and substance B. The cross multiplication step just says that if you multiply the pairs of terms along each arm of the blue cross, they are equal to each other. So in other words, 3 times the unknown is equal to 2 times 5. And rearranging the equation again gives us the answer of 3.3 moles. So here are our five remaining examples. If you want, you could pause the video here and see if you can solve each of these for the unknown. I'm going to come back and use the cross multiplication method, but you should use whichever method you prefer. Okay, so to find mole ratios, set up headings of coefficient and moles, and you can see straight away the ratio is 2 to 1. We'll keep going just to see how this pans out. So we cross multiply, and that gives you 2 times the moles of oxygen is as equal to 1 times the moles of hydrogen. You can rearrange that to arrive at this bulletproof method for mole ratios, which is really just a shortcut. And it's the way that I'd actually do these kinds of problems because it's so much quicker to go straight to this last line in one step. The second example sets up headings of carbon and hydrogen for the fixed proportions in propanol. The extra trick here is to also convert masses to moles by dividing by molar masses. Cross multiplication then gives us 0.83 grams of hydrogen when 5 grams of carbon are present in a sample of propanol. Our third example uses the headings of grams and mils. Cross multiplication gives us 12.5 grams of solute present in the solution. Next we use headings of absorbance and micrograms per mil to solve for the unknown and get 9.06 micrograms per mil of solute present. And lastly, to convert units of pressure, we use headings of millimetres of mercury and kilopascals and convert 70 kilopascals to 525 millimetres of mercury. So hopefully this has given you some extra skills in your chemistry toolkit when you realise you're dealing with a ratio problem. In other words, if when one atom or reagent or property goes up or down, the others do the same, use ratios. Good luck.